before we get into today's video, I want to show you guys that we finally got some merch for the channel. Uh, you might have seen about two to three weeks ago, I switched all of the profile pictures for all the social medias to the new logo. Uh, Farm Focus had this made up for me, and they're also making the merch. The logo is just the whole scene cow. It's got a little uh, maple leaf around the eye, and then it says Saskatchewan. I think it's pretty awesome. I love this look. It's, it's just, um, I really like it. So, uh, farmfocus.com, it'll be linked at the top of the description, and you can grab yourself this shirt. We also have this green shirt. It's um, kind of like a military green, I guess. And then we also have the gray hoodie. So, yeah, if you guys want to pick those up, it'll be in the top of the description. And yeah, let's get into today's video. Good evening, everybody. It is Sunday. We're doing the afternoon shift right now. I'm just grabbing group two, bringing them up into the parlor. I noticed a problem with one of our exhaust fans here. There's 10 exhaust fans in the barn and this one is shaking. It's not too violent yet. It's just kind of spinning slow, but it is shaking pretty good. So something's probably loose, something broke off maybe. I tried looking on the ground here for some parts, but I can't find anything. look at that fan you might see the motor vibrating a little bit back and forth uh, that's what our issue is so I was thinking maybe some of the propeller broke off or something looking for it on the ground couldn't see it so I think dad's gonna lift me up with the loader and there's actually a switch you can see it right there beside the fan and we can turn just the fan off like that so we're gonna do that and then we can look at it on another day just snapped right off so that's why it's vibrating it still seems it still seems pretty solid in there so it's just that blade that's making it vibrate So that was the sixth fan in the barn. Fans five and six are stage one, which means those are the first two fans that'll click on. So they're pretty much always running. They're the main stage, which is unfortunate that that one had to break, but probably it runs the most too. So I guess that's what it is. It just means that stages two and three are gonna kick in quicker as the barn starts to get a little bit warmer. Uh, those second stages are gonna kick in a bit quicker. Keep the barn cool. Well guys, we got switched to day pickups, which means the milk truck is gonna be coming out here during the day instead of the middle of the night, which is pretty cool. We can see the milk truck a lot better during the day. So um, yeah, he's out here right now. This is definitely one of the sweetest milk trucks that I've seen. Probably got those tanks used out of Alberta or something, and now they're operating out here in Saskatchewan. They just left the wrap on there. It's a pretty sweet looking wrap with the milk, chocolate milk, and some cows out in a pasture. Pretty awesome looking tanks right in front of the barn here. So he pulls right up to the barn. Milk tanks on that side there. He has to fill each tank separately. So each tank has its own little box underneath it. And he has to hook up. If he wants to fill the front, he's got to hook up to the front. If he wants to fill the back, he's got to hook up to the back. Each trailer, I believe, will hold 21,000 liters. So total, they can take is 42,000. But that's a little bit too heavy for legal weight. So I think they're taking like 38,000 liters in total. Um, when our milk tank is completely full after two days of production, we're shipping close to 22,000 liters of milk out. So we got to fill more than just one tank, which is pretty sweet.
This afternoon, I want to move beet pulp into our feed bin. We got a load of starch pellets earlier today, so the auger's already outside, which is awesome. The beet pulp bin is that white one right there, the tall white one. I'm gonna be filling it up. We're gonna start by opening that lid up. If you guys can see behind the auger tractor there as well, the International Tandem is back there as well, one of our silage trucks, and that's what we're gonna be using to actually move the grain. And I think that the beet pulp itself that we're gonna be grabbing is in that small bin there at the end of that row of bins. So just gotta move it about uh, 50 meters or so into this bin. So this auger is all set up, ready to unload a truck. Now we're gonna go and fill that truck. So we're gonna grab our yellow auger out of the shed. We're gonna park it in the beet pulp bin, fill up this truck. Grabbing our 10 inch Westfield auger. It's about 42 feet long, I believe. A little gasoline motor. This thing will actually start up when it's minus 30 outside without plugging anything in. You just gotta put the choke on and then uh, warm today but it'll even get going when it's minus 30 which is super impressive second auger is lined up time to grab the truck the wind is coming from there pretty strong, so I'm going to drive the truck facing that way so that the dust from this auger doesn't go over the cab. Just going to let this thing warm up for a couple minutes. I think it's been sitting outside for a couple hours, so it's definitely cold. Turn the auger on first, then we're going to rev it up and open the bottom of the bin up. It's a byproduct from sugar beet harvest and um, it's in really big pallets and it's really heavy stuff so you can't load the auger 100% full. It'll probably just stall and fill the auger and then you're gonna have to find a way to hand crank it out because it's not actually strong enough to spin this all the way through. So just taking it easy is the best thing you can do hauling this stuff. That kind of sucks, uh, makes it take a lot longer to fill a truck. I'm gonna make it today. Uh, there's quite a bit of room in the box yet, but if I were to fill it right to the rim, it wouldn't actually have enough power to dump anymore. So we gotta be careful, make sure we don't overfill this thing with this stuff. There's some other grains. Um, Farley is lighter than this stuff, so you can fill the box right full, but definitely not this beet ball. Just gonna drive out in front of our yard here, hop on the road and back into the other driveway. Makes it really easy to get lined up with that auger. Truck up quite a bit more. The lower the back end is, see that hopper, the less the beef ball jumps around and spills everywhere. Awesome. 
awesome that bin is now full gonna park everything back in the shop in the shed i filled the barley about four or five days ago now had i known this bin was so close to being empty i probably would have done this one right away too saves bringing the augers in and out of the shed more than once but oh well it's uh full and we don't have to worry about this bin for another probably two months milking shift is finished here for the pm shift and the crowd gate is not working again we hit reverse nothing happens again so this little trigger up here if i pull it down uh, that's what does it so it's supposed to just click back here but it's not enough grease on there. It's kind of seized up a little bit. So Dima's grabbing some grease from the shop and we're gonna properly grease this thing up because it's getting kind of annoying. At least we know what the problem is now. We can always send it back pretty easily if it does get hung up, so. Fix it, man. Let's go. <laughs> So just gonna move it back and forth a little bit, hopefully work some grease into it. Looks pretty good. Yeah. One thing that we do gotta remember, um, since we're getting picked up during the day now instead of at night, is we gotta turn the cooler on for the milk in the afternoon instead of the morning. This is something that we just gotta get used to. We gotta make sure we don't forget about this. Otherwise the milk is gonna be warmer for too long. You can see here, it's cooling already. We just turned it on, so. The longer milk is at a higher temperature, the more bacteria growth you're gonna have in it. Uh, they test for it. Every single individual milk tank picked up from every single farm in Canada, it's tested. I'm sure it's the same in states everywhere else. They wanna know exactly how much bacteria is in here. So if you don't turn your cooler on, it could be a bad load. You might not be able to ship it at all, so you really gotta watch that as a farmer. Anyway guys, that is gonna be it for today's video. If you enjoyed, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below. Check out the Instagram and the TikTok at SaskDutchKid and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.